Meow, meow, meow. Olive and Chumpy, Story Five, Fairy Castle. I was just playing my Wednesday golf tournament when Molly the mole arrived, totally exhausted. You have to come right away, Oliver," she said breathlessly. But I wanted to finish my game first. What could be so important? You have to see it for yourself. It is very exciting. Well, I was going to lose the game anyway, so I had a good excuse to stop early. After we had left the golf course, Molly explained that while digging a new tunnel. She suddenly had broken through a wall, and fallen into a big cavern. She was scared and did not want to explore it alone. I whistled for a letter pigeon and sent a message to Chumpy. She should meet us at the oak tree right away. Eventually, we all went together to Molly's tunnel entrance. I have made my tunnel larger so that even Chumpy can crawl through it, and so it was. We followed her down into the earthy hollow. Chumpy and I are not creatures who live below ground, so we were quite scared, especially small Joey. It did not take us very long, and we soon stepped through the hole into the wall of the cave. We followed the mole blindly, who walked just ahead of us because it was totally dark in the tunnel. But a bit later, we finally could see very well. Thousands of glowworms brightened the cavern like moonlight. Glowworms are little insects which glow like small lamps. The whole ceiling was full of them. It was very quiet in here and smelled funny. One of us unintentionally kicked a stone, which made a loud noise, and suddenly something very frightening happened. I thought a storm began to blow, and lots of things were flying around. But Molly, who is more experienced with underground happenings, told us they were just bats and not dangerous at all. We had scared them with being noisy. Bats look a bit like flying rats. They are funny creatures who hang upside down from the ceiling. A bat sleeps during the day and only comes out at night. Most of them eat fruit. The bad smell in the cavern came from them. Eventually, the bats settled down again, and we continued our exploration until we arrived at a lake. The water appeared very black, and to our surprise, there were many beautiful water lilies on its surface, but not like any we had ever seen before. These ones were huge. As a matter of fact, they looked the size of a boat. Now, what is that? Unexpectedly, faces had risen out of the center of each flower. They were very pretty girls' faces, but with silvery white hair and fairy dust on it. We are the water fairies. They all sang at once. You see, a fairy's voice is like a song, so all of them together did sound so incredibly sweet that I felt like weeping with happiness. Who is disturbing us in Fairyland? They asked. We told them our story. Of course, our voices were nothing like theirs. Meow, meow. Now that you are here, you are welcome to visit the castle. You will have to cross the lake first. We could not possibly swim to the other shore. It was too distant, and I did not want to get my elegant fur coat wet, did I? You can all step into our flowers, just like in a boat, and we will ferry you across. 
Now that was more my style. Elegant transport for an elegant kid. Quickly we arrived on the other side in comfort, where a guide fairy was waiting for us. She had already been informed about our unexpected arrival and came to lead us to the castle. She welcomed us and then opened a very old creaky door in the rock wall to let us step through. What an unforgettable sight presented itself below us. There was a lush green valley with a willow-framed noisy brook. The castle was situated in the midst of this fertile land. This amazing palace was constructed entirely out of silvery glass, so shiny that it reflected the surrounding countryside like a mirror. We walked through the gates and were immediately surrounded by fairies of many colors and sizes, with all of them flapping their wings and talking all at the same time. We could not understand a thing because of their noise. These very special creatures were simply curious about us, because none had ever seen a cat or a kangaroo before. Moles were known, since others had dug tunnels into their cave before. Welcome to Fairy Castle, strangers. We were suddenly addressed by the most exquisite fairy of them all. She was the queen and wore a long golden dress. On her silvery white hair was a very delicate crown with many beautiful diamonds whose glitter almost blinded us. Her wings were transparent and looked as light as air. Let's dance to celebrate your visit. And what a memorable time we had. Fairies dance in the air. The fairy queen threw pixie dust over us so we could fly as well. What a sight! A cat, two kangaroos and a mole dancing aloft. We were certainly not as graceful as our hosts. Fairies dancing in the air, loving life without a care, soaring up into the high, all-embracing mighty sky. Pixie dust to make us fly, three of us now also try, floating on the air above. Will we ever have enough? But all fun has to end some time, so farewells were in order. After a long drawn out goodbye, we finally made it home in the dark. What dreams we would have after this adventure! We asked the dream fairy to come to you tonight as well. Very well.